Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. What we're looking at in front of us is the power amplifier section of a 1977 Kenwood KR7600 here. And the complaint is, is that the right channel clips way before the left channel. And I verified that at the scope. The, uh, the top half of the waveform is cut off about 70% of total output. The left channel, he said, sounds fuzzy. Well, I saw that on the scope as crossover distortion, or basically notch distortion is another way to, to call it, because you're seeing a notch in the sine wave indicative of the transistors not being at the ready to pass the signal. So it's under biased. So we're going to do some troubleshooting and see if we can figure this out. This was at another shop, and they replaced a bunch of parts, and uh, I'm not really happy with the part replacement, which I'm going to show you here in a second. And the first thing I see is all the Japanese transistors have been replaced with aftermarket replacement parts. In this case, one channel has NTE devices, and the other channel has old GE devices. And if this thing would actually focus on it, then we'd be good. There we go, 262 and 263, and 280 and 281. Now I know from memory, because... We used to deal with a lot of NTE stuff that 280 and the 281 are around 4 megahertz, uh, 500 picofarads capacitance on the collector, about 200, 200 volts, you know, 14, 15 amps, 200 watt devices. These are not great. Uh, and since this channel has a bias problem, I'm probably not going to replace these because he did not authorize big money on this. However, this side here... I'm going to look up what the 262 and 263 are, and we're going to see if they're appropriate for this. Now, one side obviously is working, but the other is not. But is that because it's at the limit and starting to fail, or because there's another issue downstream, or because one of the transistors is dying and it doesn't have enough gain? So let's look up what these are first. Yeah, I'm not really able to find anything. I have my old GE transistor manuals, but they don't list that. NT cross references to the same damn thing. So I'm going to assume it's pretty freaking close. So since this is a full complementary design, you can tell he had etched in here what was originally here at 2SB555, 2SD425. Uh, we're going to go with, uh, since the top half, that's the positive half cycle is at fault, we're going to check this guy first for beta, leakage, etc. And then we're going to trace this backwards there goes a lot of parts replaced on this board. I mean, a lot of resistors were changed out, a lot of burn stuff. Uh, it could be that the driver transistor is sad, uh, and it's not putting out enough current to drive the output transistor. I checked all of these resistors that were replaced. They're happy, uh, so I don't think that's it. Um, yeah, so let's yank the output transistor, and let's just check the beta on it. We're going to see how well this works one-handed. do love magnetic tools. This thing's in there pretty tight. All right, so there she is. Let's separate our thermal insulator there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to re-grease this thing anyways because this grease is old and tacky. And we're just going to do a basic junction test to make sure that it's not open. Which is going to be tricky. Let me put the camera down a sec. All right, let's try it this way. That way everyone can see what's up here. So between base and the collector, got a junction there. Between base and emitter, got a junction there. No leakage that way. No leakage that way. Okay, 
batteries. Now this is only a 9 volt battery supply, or actually this is a 6 volt battery supply, so I can't really test this for leakage. But uh, let's see what the beta is on it. Alright, got everything hooked up. I'm going to hit the tester and we're going to wait a little bit. Alright, so this has a beta of 67. You see there, that's acceptable. Uh, <clears throat> these output transistors should typically have a beta between 40 and 60. So, I don't think it's the output transistor. Alright, we got her back in with her fresh heat sink goo on her. Well, let's take a look at the driver board here. And i got to take those two screws up, fold this back, and we're going to yank the uh, driver transistor here to a C1913 and see if it's gotten weak or has decided to intermittently open which would definitely cause a lack of current and drive okay so we got our board down things loose remember to loosen those thermal sensors now let's get the transistor out all right she's unsoldered Yankee Yankee and out she comes so there's the little guy right there see what this little guy says yeah that's a little low uh, that should really be in the hundred range let's double check that looks like it should have a minimum of 65 and a max of about 330 let's see if I have another one of these to yank all right here's another one for comparison Let's see how this one turns out. Eighty-four. I don't think. I, I mean, it is above what the uh, minimum spec is, but uh, I'm having trouble believing that that's really the cause of it. It could be. But I also don't want to throw parts at it. But I also don't want to throw a lot of time at it. So let's take a closer look at what's going on here. Now another thing that could be happening is, is this has limiter transistors in it. Uh, you've got a, a set of TO92s here and basically their job is is to monitor the current across the base resistors here. You got one here and you got one here and so when ever it swings one way or the other too far and too much current is generated it turns these transistors on which then clamp the bases of the drivers down and cause the um, machine to clip. Uh, so that way it's not overdriving and trying to draw more current than the amp was designed for. So it could be that one or more of these is latching inappropriately that's causing the clipping that's too soon. And that would be leakage on those transistors. So one by one I'm going to yank... Uh, <clears throat> this is the one for the NPN side, and these are the ones for the PNP side. So I'm going to yank these guys and test them for leakage. And if they are leaky, replace them, and very likely that will be the cause of our distortion. Okay, so here's our first guy, this 2SC945. First, let's check him for excess beta. About 166. That's about what I would say is normal for that device in this application. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to check between collector and emitter. And I'm using this VOM, this W519A, because it puts about 22.5 volts across the device. So in one direction between collector and emitter, we should have a little bit of leakage, and in the other direction we should have none. You see that? See that deflection? So we have deflection in one direction, we should have it in none in the other. Alright, so there's none there, but there's deflection here. So in theory this device is working correctly, let's just do a basic junction test with this guy. We got a junction there, 
dot junction there. I shouldn't have any base collector leakage, which I don't. So that device is cool. Uh, let's pull the other one and see if the other one's good. Okay, so here's the next one. Again, I should have a little leakage in one direction. Well, that's not good. That's a little excessive. And then in the other direction here. All right, so this device is defective. So that is most certainly what's causing our uh, excess latching, which is uh, clipping it. Yeah, I got good junction here. Wow, I even have deflection on R times 1. That's pretty bad. Okay. Let's see what the regular DMM says out of curiosity. I'm sure it's not very good. Just go to a diode check here. Oh yeah, that's terrible. Not good. 416 ohms between the collector and emitter. So that device is trash. So we found the cause of our clipping. Uh, the fact that the limiter transistor is defective. They use a a cascade of a PNP and an NPN to make it work, but the PNP side is very much defective. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and replace that. Um, and then we'll troubleshoot the other channel for the bias problem. Alright, so we got our uh, new limiter transistor in here. So I'm going to take a fair gamble and say that this channel is probably fine. Now we move on to the left side, which was under-biased, and it had no adjustment. It couldn't, the bias could not be adjusted. No matter where you put the control, it was the same. So let me take a look at the schematic diagram and see where our possible points of failure could be. Okay, so here's our schematic diagram uh, for the 7600 power amp. And what you see is the signal comes in, goes through your differential amplifiers to get your zero offset, goes to your Class A driver. The Class A driver, then the current path follows to the bias transistor and to the thermal, uh, which changes the voltage across the bias transistor with heat and causes, uh, basically, the job of the bias transistor here is to pull the bases of the driver's true uh, driver transistors together to lower the current or push them apart for more. So if we have no control, either the bias transistor is shorted, uh, the little capacitor that shunts the network is shorted, um, we've got a shorted control, which is really, that's a rare one, or um, the Class A driver simply isn't putting out enough oomph. And so we need to check here for 1.1 volts if any of this stuff looks happy honky-dory. Uh, but yeah, so check the bias transistor first. Uh, and then we'll kind of look at other stuff to see where the current path could be interrupted for the bias supply. And so here we are. And I'm just going to set this over here. We're going to check the bias transistor really quick. He's the biggest suspect. And if we come over here, we got a junction there, junction there. Come on now. And we got a short there. So, yep, that guy's trash. Because if we go to the other channel, we got a junction there, got a junction there, and we got. Very high resistance there, which is about normal for that circuit. So that was easy. We found the culprit. Uh, so this transistor has to go. Um, not sure what they use here. Let's take a look at the schematic diagram again and see what they use. And that's going to be... That's number, that's Q7. We're using a 2SA620. Uh, I could probably use a 
KSA 992. That should work perfectly fine. So let's swap them out. Yank this guy out here and replace it. Okie dokie. So we got this thing swapped out. We got our fresh bias transistor in there. Also took care of some loose connections around that area too. And just overall check the board. Somebody made a jumper back here. I don't know if you can see it. Probably can't because the camera doesn't want to focus. Just jumper back there from somebody wiping out a foil trace. But given what we have seen here, there's a fair chance that we'll be able to put this thing back together, turn it on, and it will work. Now, a few notes about bias troubleshooting. Uh, if you have no bias and it's not adjustable, we look at the bias transistor. Uh, or if it's got one of those like STV3Hs or something, make sure that's not shorted. And also make sure it's not the incorrect part. I remember running across a repair where somebody had installed the incorrect diodes and they were like one less junction than they should have been. Uh, if you've got too much bias, make sure the bias transistor is not open. Make sure the potentiometer is not open. Make sure you don't have a shorted Class A driver or a very leaky Class A driver, which is, in this case, this fat guy over here. Make sure you don't have leaky drivers or bad output transistors. All of those will cause issues. Uh, also, um, trying to think of what else. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that, that more or less sums it up for basic troubleshooting. So I'm going to reassemble this board, this heat sink. We're going to stick it back in the machine. We're going to get a dim bulb tester, power this thing on, and see if we can set the BIOS on both channels, and then do a power output test and see if the machine behaves correctly. Okay, so we got the amplifier in and all hooked up. Um, and we have our dim bulb tester out because I always put a dim bulb tester on a set after I've done working on the amplifier or the power supply. Why? Because I know that I'm not 100%. Everybody makes mistakes. You don't know whether what you did is correct or not until you turn it on. You could think that you installed it right and made a mistake. You could have shorted something together, created a solder bridge, installed a part backwards. We've all done it. And so the bulb is there to absorb your screw-up. So if you make a mistake, the bulb gets bright and the machine doesn't go up in flames. And you can go back and troubleshoot what you need to do. So let's flip the switch. Bulb gets nice and dim, comes out of protect. That's lovely. That's exactly what I want to see. And if I go over to auxiliary here and inject a signal, I've got this pretty signal here with no notch distortion, a little bit of variance between left and right, but I think that's largely the volume control uh, because if I turn the signal down and turn the volume control up, it does start to get a little more linear so, yeah. But, no more notch distortion in the left channel. Uh, we need to see if the right channel clips out. But first, let's check our bias and make sure that that's happy. Okay, so right now across the emitters, I am getting 135 millivolts in the right channel. That's too high. It's supposed to be about 40, according to the service manual. That may explain why the bulb is dimly lit there, but still lit. So I'm going to grab my adjustment tweaker and we're going to turn this down a bit. And we'll turn it a little bit lower since we're on the dim bulb tester. We'll go to 35 here. Okay, and let's do the other channel. And the other channel is reading a bit low. So we're going to grab our tweaker stick here. We're going to adjust this up to about 35 millivolts. Okie dokie. And again, once I take off this off the dim bulb tester, there's a good chance that this is going to jump up to near 40. So, if we do that, if we take it off the dim bulb tester here and put it straight up. Ooh, that's super high. All right, so I underestimated that, obviously. Yeah, let's go ahead and turn this down. Yes, 
40 there, and about 40 there. So we're good with this one. And the final test is, is if we crank it the hell up, we get symmetrical clipping. It's about what I want to see. Back it off just a hair. Oh yeah. See, before the right channel, the top half was just cut off about two-thirds. So this thing's happy. Now, there's still a lot of other stuff that needs to be done to it, but we at least fixed the disabling failures with the amplifier. So it'll be up to the uh, customer if he wants to pursue this much further, because, again, low budget. So at any rate, I hope you guys enjoy the little troubleshooting video. More stuff to come.